track conditions continue to dry out. Next race on circuit is the Formula 125s. Dennis and Duncan is going to take us through the race. So as we see the 125s leaving the garage past Andrew Donald, their chief pit lane marshal there. 125 will also go one for Kawasaki's, that's Ty McIntosh on that bike. And uh, so Rory Skinner on the front row from McGilvery and Robson. Ashley Robson getting a front row start with Polanski, Patterson and Murray, Gill and McIntosh at the top eight and fact the entire grid there. The Knockin' Motorsports Club 125s. They're quite exciting these little kids when they get going, Dennis. They, they try very, very hard. Well, where's that camera mounted? It looks like it's off the side of the mudguard there. Actually quite impressive, that possibly yeah. on a fork leg, you never know. It looks like the wheel's spinning backwards just with the motion there. If you, if you watch it, it's, it's quite a funky uh, camera shot. These guys at AJK TV, they know how to mount the cameras and get the best shots for us here at the Knock Hill Motor Sports Club. And here comes young Rory Skinner. This man is pretty special, Dennis, you've got to say. He's got an 80cc engine there. He's in a Grand Prix 125 chassis with the 80cc put in it. And the Formula 125 bike alongside him of Declan McGilvery. Yeah. Declan McGilvery. How much pressure did he put Rory Skinner on oh. yesterday in dry conditions? Awesome. And, and good to see a 1 2 5 running at a proper pace that we know they can, and obviously that shows that they're very equal and competitive bikes of GP18 to the year they put the RS125. We do like Declan McGill, but we're a big fan of him in the commentary box. We just wish we'd see him a little bit more often on the number 21 bike. So we're just getting everybody gridded and lined up here. We are about to go racing in tricky conditions for them here as well. Yeah, dark conditions, you know, he's going to always run wet tyres on that GP80 pipe, so he's got issues with all of them, the guys should know the dark tyres in front of Pinkney Pipe's getting a full race, and off the line, and look at that, oh, and it's, uh, she's definitely learned that one from her dad there, because Matt Polanski was the man of the moment last year with the starts on that pre-injection bike, and she charges down towards a hairpin. Yeah, Miguel, he's managed to go over the top of one of the brakes, but Rory Skinner absolutely checked out, and he got that thing under the power, power band and just leapt away from everybody. It's like a two-second lead by the first corner, isn't it? Yeah. I love that, I really like that, he'll be, he'll be enjoying that as he comes round in the next lap. It's a 125's head along his slopes towards the clutch for the first time of asking her on board with Bethany Polanski. And Beth, she's been there, uh, she's come on leaps and bounds. Consider, I remember last year we used to give her three laps a race and she'd have to get black flag because they were coming up to lap her. Look where she is now, she's sitting in third place. A, a total revelation, Duncan. And it, sometimes one of these things, you know, when, you, when you've been riding, you go away for the winter, you're away from the bike, it gives you time to think and understand things and when you come back it's a fresh approach and instantly going quicker and, and, and you're not talking by a little bit you're talking by massive yes, chunks of seconds yeah. you know almost like six, six seconds. to ten yeah. seconds quicker per lap but it looks easier smoother more controlled and, and this is what you like to see is progression and don't oh, remember to miss gear there isn't uh, especially plastic you're just struggling with, with gears there and she, she actually put a hand up there and i think that actually robson managed to sneak through so Bethany, unfortunately, had to, uh, to have a little bit of a problem. Yeah, getting a replay of that there, she, oh, Ashley Robson flies through on the on lasers there. And she's another very, very quick young lady. Yeah, we've, we've got three of them, which normally come into play, but we don't have Gillian McGon here this weekend. Gillian McGon, unfortunately, not with us on 125 duty. But look at this at the front. Declan McElvery is absolutely trying everything he knows. He's done a lot of mini motor racing in the past. Everything he knows to try and catch up with this Rory Skinner. I, I, I like his round style, McElvery. Yeah, he's, he's a big guy to be on that bike, and... Uh, or compared to Rory Skinner, Rory Skinner just now he is, he's so Inside small, board, yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, Declan doing a fantastic job, and he's swallowing up. Now look at the, the gap he's getting in as a charge through towards Scotsman Conn, he's almost up towards the back of Rory Skinner already. He's very much a, a, a kind of a two stroke like Adrian Coates, always head butted behind the, 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 the screen, never wants to get that thing out in the wind there and try, try and get a bit more speed up the main street. But here he goes, he's, he's managed in that last lap, wind in young Rory Skinner, and these bikes are extremely well matched on power on the main street. Uh, and they're going they're actually very, very good. This is a tricky, tricky conditions then, as you can fold the front so easily on these bikes because they're so light. Yeah, for sure, tricky conditions. It looks like almost towards the top end of the power, the 125 starts to come back towards a GP80 bike, Duncan. But on this you'll drive, even though it's going to be so small, it managed to pull away as well towards Ty McIntosh there. Yeah, alongside him, Lewis Patterson, son of Torco Patterson, and Torco giving his son all sorts of advice there. Keeping them right as they go over the crest hill. I mean, to see the four strokes the one two fives mixing together. Just watching that, doing that, I'm sure the travel probably would have sport to uh, the young lad there that maybe he's, he, he's on wet tyres and we know it's getting a dry line. Keep off the off the dry line, keep on the wet part of the track, keep the tyres nice and cool as well. Look at these two though. Look at McGilvery charging up to the back of Rory Skinner. Rory Skinner quite happy to soak up the pressure that Declan McGilvery is putting on him. That is like little and large, isn't it? As they come up through Leslie's over the top of Saint Curves. On towards another lap, the Galvery trying to get out, trying to trying to get in the slipstream of Rory Skinner, but there just isn't a slipstream there, is there? No, he's still hitting the wind. 
But over the top it goes and charges down to the hairpin. And, and can it go and get close enough for a pass, Duncan? Look at this. They are very, very close. They're you know, as close as they've been all race and all weekend they've been like this. Oh, Declan McGillivray, very close to back. And he's gonna, it must be trying to like slip through a Jack Russell for Declan McGillivray. There's not a lot of frontal area in front of him from Roy Skinner. But then they're heading along towards Hessops and Class. This is where the track starts to dampen up a little bit more. Yeah, for sure. This is probably quite the, uh, tricky as it goes into Ross Class, but you can see halfway through the corner, Duncan, perfectly dry, just a little bit damp on the exit. But this line getting better and better all the time as you go through the top of the chicane. And Rory Skinner using the curves both sides straight through, but McGilvy decided to miss them. So, like I say, McGilvy maybe not done as much trap time as Rory Skinner, but probably the same really both, both reverse, but yeah. This way on Declan, Declan really strong in and through Scotsman and then up through Leslie's. Onto the top of the hill, McGilvery's pretty strong here, winding that little bike up, tries to get tucked in, look at that, everything getting tucked in behind that ball. Needs to take that bibble, that may be slowing him down a little bit as well, as he go over the crest hill to chalk off another lap here at Knock Hill. Down towards the apron, it's still number 69, Rory Skinner leads the way from 21, Declan McGilvery. We did say it was like a little and large, but we're really they're riding very well together. Rory Skinner adapting and soaking up this pressure really well, which he's not really used to. No, no, for sure, Rory Skinner's normally riding around on his own. And we've seen this in previous years, you know, you look back to the uh, Mini Twins last year, Duncan Paul McClung, he was riding on his own under no pressure, but now he's in a class with Super Sport 600 guys, or Super Stock 600, he's been competitive and he's racing, and it's good to see. And this is what Rory Skinner needs, Rory Skinner needs to be putting the pressure. He's only a young kid, we've got to remember, he's only 11 years old, yeah. and he's got dispensation to be out there and doing this. But he's such a talented young guy, you've got to admit, you know, but the, the more pressure and the more faster guys he rides with, the better he's going to get and the more he's going to flourish. And this is what you see in Spain and other foreign championships. And these guys progress through into Grand Prix and what we would probably call Moto 3 now. Yeah. And there's every chance of Robert Skinner, if he keeps this up, maybe he's progressing into Spain over the next couple of years. He could be in, in Moto 3 by the time he's 14 years old, possibly. Marquez, Pedroza, Lorenzo, you know, they're all, they're all come from that junior ranks. And we've had a, a few good few riders out there as well. Very old Kev Coughlin cut his teeth out there in Spain and John McPhee as well. Well, John McPhee out there now in, in, in Moto 3, Kev Coughlin riding World Super Sport. These guys have pushed onto, onto mega things and uh, Rory Skinner, you know, it's good for the actual, uh, the 125 class sponsored by his dad, Skinner Motorcycles. And uh, this, this is great to see these guys out there doing a good job. And you've got to admit that maybe like, his dad might have to sell a shop and move abroad or something like that. But you know, these guys have, have got the chance to, to, to flourish and, and not take anything away from Declan McGilvery. Declan he's doing right, a great job. Well. He, he's off the mini bikes as well and he's adapting well to the 125. And yeah, it's uh, it was on the metric yet, I'm sure we saw it last yeah, year. He raced a couple of means last year on a meeting for us last year on the 80cc metric at the De Declan McGillivray and it did look, it looked like me riding a kid's unicycle. It was a tiny, tiny bike for him and he was just so underpowered. He pushed it so hard, so hard and eventually, you know, slipped off the thing. But we've seen him here riding so well in this 125 Aprilia and they've just gone past Jordan Gill there, number 22 of McGillivray, tucked right in behind Ty, Ty McIntosh about to come under the cosh of McGilvery and Skinner as they go heading round towards Clarkson. This is a chance for Skinner to get past McGilvery. He's going to have to be pretty ruthless here. And yes, he was. And look at that. They come through Clarkson's the dry track, as you see. And just when they're looking for loads and loads of grip, it goes dark then. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, the how much time did the point Ty McIntosh? There's all the Ninja 250. Good to see Ty McIntosh out there learning his trade as well. And the, the Ninja 250 is a nice bike. It's, it's perfect to ride. And he's going to get quicker and quicker all the time. We saw him at the last meeting in the normal direction do, doing a good job uh, but tricky conditions maybe it's, these guys are more confident with the way the conditions are at the moment than the rest of the guys everyone else probably likes it when it's bone dry and there's no issues at all or whether it's fully wet so it's even but it's quite a tricky but these guys are still going on a hell of a place absolutely flat out up through the hill there they come in towards the it's Lewis Patterson about to go under the uh, a lap down there Lewis lets one of them pass and he, he kind of probably knew that Declan McGillivray was about to come past him and he did McGillivray running a little bit wide at the damp part there almost had to pick the bike up and he's lost just no I mean he's not lost a lot of time but he's lost enough time enough you, to make him think you could see he was wide on the uh, but exactly what you said there he was picking the bike up he knew he was wide he needs to get on the fat part of the tyson. oh McGillivray sorry Dennis he loses the back end just when we were talking about needing some grip McGillivray loses the back end and down he goes in the gravel trap, he runs to pick the bike up, and what a shame! That was on full lean, just tapping on the little 125cc of probably a horsepower, and down he goes. And what a shame, Declan McGilvery out of that one. 
And that left Rory Skinner completely off the leash and he has a huge, huge lead now over what would be Ashley Robson yep. in second place. Yeah, he's just gone past the year. Oh, look at that. On the machine of Kieran, uh, Kieran Murray and uh, McGilvery, unfortunately, has gone down. But so don't look at the time screen. He's already 50 seconds ahead now of the next person on track, which is Ashley Robson and Bethany Plansky here sitting in third place. And if Bethany didn't have that problem where she came out of Scotsman Corner, yeah. Uh, she lost a load of drive and Ashley Robson came through. She might well have been in the mix with Ashley Robson there, battling for second place, but this will be a, an overall well-deserved podium. And the camera shot we were getting from earlier on, you can actually see it, it's mounted just off the side of the mudguard. <laughs> very, very unusual as the guys come underneath the bits and building supplies bridge ready to clock uh, it for another lap. Yeah, there was Bethany Polanski passes there, but still feeling pretty sorry for, still pretty, feeling pretty sorry for young Declan McGilvery there. But here comes Rudy Skinner, he flashes past and Rudy Skinner takes a well-deserved checker flag, he had to fight very very hard for that one from Ashley Robson in second place. Young Beth Polanski gets a well-deserved podium. Kieran Murray, Lewis Patterson, Ty McIntosh, John Gill and the luckless Declan McGilvery part at Clark Corner at the side of the track.